Excuse me, I was wondering if it started. We're not hearing anything on the Zoom. Sorry about that. Um, Going to recap real quick because I didn't realize nobody could hear us. My name is Julia Gomez. Welcome to the youth meeting. Um, would you like to introduce yourself? Um, my name is Jane DeCosta, the executive director and founder of Equestrian. I'm just new to the area and was just trying to find out a little bit more about the community. Um, we are one of, I'm sure, a few of many of um, bidders for our for Riverdale. And I just wanted to get the community and uh, see what other, um, what exactly is a uh, board aid do for his involvement with youth and so forth, since we are primarily, we, we, we cover all uh, ages, but, you know, we are, youth, we start as a youth development and we get children college scholarships and grants and so forth. So we were just trying to figure out what is the leg of the lamb of what is community board aid's involvement with, with uh, the youth in the neighborhood and if any of that goes back to what we do with STEAM and STEM and, and so forth. Sorry, your organization is, I just want to make sure I get it correct for the minutes. Metropolitan Equestrian. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and I would love to hear more about the work that you guys do. Um, so feel free to tell us a little bit more when we get to new business. Um, I guess for the record, since we did this and there was no sound, um, there was no discussion of the minutes from March and the minutes were passed unanimously. Um, the only item I had under my chair support is I just wanted to share some information about Camp Aaron. Camp Aaron is a free weekend bereavement camp for children 7 to 17 who are experiencing the death of a significant adult in their, or a significant person in their lives. Um, it is going to be August 23rd to 25th this year. And they also run a concurrent parent guardian retreat called COPE, which supports bereaved children and guardians in the same area. Um, so all the information on that will be in the minutes as well. Um, the next item, and I think I have this nested incorrectly, is our budget request. Um, going over the spreadsheet and the minutes from the last few meetings. Um, I was the, not sure if we wanted to keep the, I thought we did, but I did, wasn't explicit, the SYEP and job programs as budget priorities. And then to add maybe, um, we had talked about adding a third priority this year uh, to expand programs to combat hate crimes and bullying. Thank you. I actually noted that from this past, from the 10 minutes I, I learned in 10 minutes. Actually, from all the sessions at this meeting, mm -hmm. the 20% of the youth who took, who applied, and like took, I, there's an acronym here. Are you familiar with this acronym, YAY? Mm -hmm. I am okay. not. I couldn't find it. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, I got it. Mm -hmm. I got it. Fine. It's right here. I should have paid more attention. Youth Ask Youth mm -hmm. Census applied to SYEP, but were not accepted. Mm -hmm. So that's like a really good thing to, I think, put in the, to put in the budget to up that funding so that we can get. I mean, this is. So it, because like, here's the whole thing, ready? This is worth the train ride, right? Absolutely. 50%, 55% of youth think summer jobs would help them feel more financially secure. And 75% of the respondents frequently sometimes or always worry about their household's ability to pay bills. Um, so I think that's a real so I think that that's a really good thing. For the budget, is there, do we know, and you know a lot more about SYEP than I do, mm -hmm. do they give Metro cards? Um, I think they can. I don't okay. know if they always do. 
Um, I think that's like a big thing on here with 74% of youth say they worry about being able to pay for transportation. And that's like all year so, round? Or? Yeah. So I wonder if like that's something we could put in as well. Um, So I'm trying to see if on my phone because I'm not connected to the Wi-Fi here. Um, do would you like me to make it more explicit then in the way that the last year's mm -hmm. read was uh, the youth committee asked that the UICD its funding to at a minimum maintain if not expand SYP for the and I have to update this. Sorry. Should we add a like uh, I would love to know if, if there's like a certain percentage we could hope to hit maybe like 90%? If this is 74%, or sorry, if 23% we're not having, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, we could uh, add in here including support around transportation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. increased weight, you know. Um, so are, we trying to, are we trying to increase the percentage of kids from our uh, children who are getting it, the youth are getting it? I think so. And add to that that transportation costs should also be considered. Those are two different things, I think, right? What do you think? Um, I mean, I I think those could both be covered under expanding mm -hmm. um, FYEP. Um, I can then specify in that to both increase the number of accepted applicants as well as support transportation mm -hmm. hardships or something. That's a good way to put it. So the Youth Committee asked the DYCD commits funding to, and I guess we're not going to say maintain anymore, expand. to expand SYP for the 2025-2020 fiscal year, um, including increasing the number of applicants accepted as well as around transportation. Okay. Um, so item two is job programs for youth adults. Youth committee asked that DYCD commits funding to expanding both current and new job placement programs for young adults. And the third one is the Youth Committee asked that DYCD commits funding to expand programs to combat hate crimes and bullying to protect young people's mental health. Great. Mental and just mental health. health. Overall health? Overall health, yes. It could be actually physically dangerous. Yeah, it was sorry, I was directly linking it to the article that um, mm -hmm. but yes, yeah, that's Accurate. It's not just a mental health that is in danger. Any questions, comments, concerns, thoughts about the budget priorities? I do not believe we officially do, but we are a small committee that. Mr. Gellman has a hand Yes, Mr. Gellman. Uh, yes. Um, I didn't hear all of them, but are they all expense items and not? Um, um uh capital items yes they're all expense items okay and uh, okay fine um and have you identified the agency uh, in particular that you're uh, making this request of we each, have each case each case yes okay good good all right so um uh, when you're done you'll have the uh your your committee name the agency name the sort of the headline title, and then maybe a, uh, followed by a, a brief description, right? That's what we have. Uh, excellent, excellent. All right, and, and presumably you'll be able to get it to the office and CC me by Friday? Yep, uh, you guys should have it tomorrow. Well, just because I don't have Wi-Fi here, I would be sending it to you now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, very good. Just checking. I, I'm, I'm just here really as a resource for you, if I can help you out uh, at all. I appreciate it. Um, so I think that was technically old business. Um, is there, I'm going a bit out of order, I hope you'll forgive me. 
Is there any other old business that we need to revisit this evening? Anything lingering that I said? I did look into, just for the minutes, in case the person who brought it up last time isn't here, I did look into the community kitchens, um, but they seem to be more volunteer, kind of ad hoc. I couldn't trace down um, who to ask, like what agency to ask from, which is why it's not here. But we can do more looking so we can get at least, I'm sure there's got to be a flyer somewhere that we can have ready to give folks if they need information on it. Um, new business. Any items of new business? Oh, ma'am. I'm so sorry. Okay. I, as I like see these things, I actually guess I learned a lot more than I thought I did in the like <laughs> time I, before I walked out. Okay. So, oh wait, that's my metro card. Okay. So, we spoke about trying to add youth. So oh, now, sorry. we start from the beginning for the people on the. Yeah. So, um, about what? So you, what, the oh, okay, yes, yes. If this is being recorded, right? I would actually yeah. love to go on the record. Okay. I went to the NYC Youth Agenda meeting down downtown um, on One Center Street, and there was an amazing um, fair opportunity beforehand of different topics that teenagers were presenting about economic mobility and education equity and housing and security and environmental and mental health and all the steps the city had taken or hadn't taken and they were explaining and they were making recommendations. Um, and then the meeting started and first, the first person to speak was the uh, public advocate, Giovanni Williams, and at the end, and he said, we need to listen to our youth and we need to hold our elected officials accountable for these things, and he goes, and we also need to hold them accountable to um, holding Palestinian lives with, an, with as much importance as Israeli lives, and I call for a ceasefire. And then every teenager after him called for a ceasefire, to which I left. But before that happened, I learned from all the committees they had and all the rec recommendations they made. So. We had spoken months back when we were accepting applications mm -hmm. to the community board about getting, seeing how we could make it to get more teens on the board, and our thoughts didn't exactly pan out. Mm -hmm. However, as we look towards the future and plan for the next year, um, I learned about this great website and organization called the Youth Civic Hub NYC, and they have on their website, they have all different ways for youth in our city to get involved locally in their communities. And they said if we contact them, they'll help us. If we want to like plan way far in advance and look towards the future, which I'm happy to do, um, to reach out to them about different ways other community boards have gone, um, have gone to like advocate or help youth go through the process of joining the community board, um, and they're happy to help us do that. So I figure yeah. that I will put this in my calendar for January. I'm going to put all this info in my calendar for Jan. I'll have an initial meeting with them, if that's okay with you, mm -hmm. and then yeah. make a note for January of 2025 to follow up with them to really get those steps concrete and on the, on the road. So, yeah. yeah. Madam Chair, may I say something? Uh, always. I think we don't have to wait because they can become community members now. They can. Like yes. So if, okay. If we have youth, if we have youth who are interested in joining the committee, they mm -hmm. can come. They can speak. They can, you know, they can actively participate. Which, which for the adults coming to coming to a meeting mm -hmm. is a requirement. So I don't think we have to wait. Great. So let's not wait. Wait. If we have people. Okay. If we have youth who are local who, who want to participate. Okay. You know, we, we have a very uh, very open open committee next to our chair, so people yeah. talk, even, you know, whether you're on or not, but we can, yeah. Amazing. So do you want me to copy you on the email? Please feel free. Um, and again, they can come to the next meeting, give a presentation. They oh, can... yeah. Oh, great. Okay, we're on it. We have steps. Great. Sounds like a wonderful resource.
Anything else? I was hoping I could, we could hear more from Mr. Costa. Yes. Hi, how are you? Um, sorry, I could not be there. Um, I, I, uh, we, have, we have pizza and everything. I know. I was kind of jealous, actually. Um, <laughs> well, my name is Jane DeCosta. I'm the executive director and founder of Metropolitan Equestrian. Um, we are a nonprofit. We're 14 years old. We originated out of New York City um, and we went nationwide. Um, we, the reason why I was virtually attending this, um, this meeting was, um, as you may or may not know, there is a stable in your neighborhood, uh, Riverdale Stables, um, that was up for RFP. Um, we submitted our, our bid. Um, if you know anything about doing business with the city, these things take time. Um, so <laughs> uh, we're in the waiting stages. Just a little while. Just a little while. <laughs> um, this is my first RFP, and I, I made a joke, the truth by my humor. I said, I hope it's my I hope we win and I hope it's my last. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but it's a process. Um, it kind of just came to just a thought that, you know, um, we don't know if we're, we're gonna win it or not. I mean, we've gone through the process and so forth, but um, and we're still waiting. But I just wanted to get to kind of know the community, um, what its engagement, um, our, our perspective of what we do is very different than a normal, um, equestrian facility. Um, our, uh, our goal is to utilize education and get uh, people in the community or people, horse enthusiasts excited either about academics or leaderships or entrepreneurship or um, obviously fulfilling jobs. Um, yeah, and you mentioned before, obviously, you know, we've, we've done SYEP, um, we've done, um, you know, we've gotten our children over $2 million in college scholarships. Um, the, uh, the barrier to entry for equestrian sports is, uh, Visa, MasterCard, American Express and Discover. Um, and it's not, and I think there are a lot of people that really want to be a part of our sport, but they just don't know how to get it. And I think also, you know, I, I grew up in Brooklyn many years ago, I'm 46 years old. Uh, but, you know, I think that, um, there is a thought of even being someone who lives in the city that you have to leave the city in order to ride, or you have to come from financial wealth in order to ride. Um, and I've been an equestrian since I'm 12, you know, and um, it's very important to me um, to keep the horse community alive, but also to make it attainable um, and to um, just break the myths that are there. Um, so I wanted to just kind of, you know, we're youth advocacy. We're, we're, we're mostly filled with youth. We do serve adults. Um, we do everything from equine therapy to education programs to competition teams to regular lessons to just horsemanship engagement. Um, we actually do a, serve a division of trafficking. Um, but I think the crux of what I, my goal of to be in this call was to, how do we, if we were to win this bid, we don't know. Um, how do we engage or break the, the stigma that the barns in the area are unattainable unless you come from financial wealth? And how do we then um, engage the community to come and be involved and to show them the different opportunities that are available to them? You know, your one of your streamlined missions is to obviously do uh, youth involvement in your community boards and so forth. You know, a lot of our com a lot of our uh, education programs have come from youth driven initiatives, you know, what they're looking for, what they're seeking to do. So it's kind of the same, but obviously you're looking to draw from your immediate community. Um, like I said, we're just trying to get to know what the immediate community board eight would, what is the engagement? What are you guys looking to accomplish? Yes, there are some, easy, tangible things that we have done, like SYEP and so forth and leadership classes and so forth. But is there something that we are missing coming into a community? We're not just coming with an agenda. What is something that Community Board 8 has seen in the past that is lacking? And how can we, if knock on wood, we win this, how do we make that go forward? And even if we don't, um, how do we then provide horseback riding opportunities to the students of the Bronx and, and throughout New York City more, and how do we engage that conversation to make it comfortable? 
So um, my initial thought is uh, normally we have a few more participants on the call. Um, it's one of our lighter nights, but we usually have the community centers here. The Youth Committee in Community Board 8 really focuses on liaising with the community centers in our area. Um, we also have an education committee, or library education and cultural affairs, I believe is their title now. Um, that, that would be a resource in terms of getting your program out there. Um, in terms of here at the Youth Committee, ideally, um, if when you get the RFP and your we would help connect you with those community centers and they can tell you what they're needing and missing and we try to facilitate those conversations and bonds. We also would obviously share and, and still willing to share any of your flyers or any programs you're having. We'd share it with our list and make sure that people knew about the good work that you're doing. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something, but that's just how my brain is today. Is there anything? No, I think I think what you're doing now is exactly you know getting us the information on uh, in, and letting us post it and get it out to our to our sources is the first thing. And should you get the R uh, get the RFP awarded, certainly you know bringing bringing the stable out of the out from behind the bushes that have been erected in front of it and the trees that have been erected in front of it over the years, so people don't even see it anymore. Back in the day, you used to be able to see it, but... Um, well, I, I will tell you, part of that is to protect the horses, because sometimes they see things that go by and they kind of lose their mind. That's probably part of it. You know, that's that's to kind of keep everybody safe. Um, we made plans and, and the bus are. goes by and the horse laughs at us, you know, so it's a, it's a little bit of that. Um, but um, I think that also, um, you know, equestrian, equestrian sports sometimes tends to serve homogenous communities. Um, obviously, um, this... Um, RFP comes from um, Women Driven Initiative. Um, the, both of the women that are on this RFP are, well, we're both women. Um, I'm a service member. She's not. Um, you know, we're ingrained in New York City. Um, we, our roots are, are, are very driven from that. And, you know, for, I just know that for me, being a Brooklynite, I don't live in New York City anymore, but um, me being a Brooklynite, um, it's very important um, to have the horse community stay, it's and it's it's becoming more slim, you know. And um, I think that uh, the engagement of the communities just it's just really important, and we have to demystify that. Mr. Gelman, you have your hand raised. Uh, yes, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Costa. Uh, De Costa, excuse me. Uh, you are aware that this. Um, RFP is coming out of the, the Department of Parks and Recreation, right? Yes, I'm aware. We submitted back in December. Oh, you did? Okay, because... Oh, yes. No, we're, we're, we're one of the... We're in the last stages. It's, we, we've been going through this. I just wanted to preemptively come on to this and say, if we're supposed to be finding out at some point if this is what's happening and who is Community Board 8? What do they do? Who are they serving? What is their goal set? Um, uh, it's terrific that you want to um, uh, incorporate uh, the youth into uh, your programs, but realize, please realize that this has largely been addressed by the uh, Parks uh, Committee. So you may want to get more information from the office and from the uh, Parks Chair about that aspect. Oh yeah, no, I, I we've, we've have. We've, we've been talking every single month since December. This, okay. is, this is just locality. This is not to have an angle to the RFP. This is nothing of that nature. This is me as an executive director, as a founder saying, what's community board eight and what are they looking to do? How do they, you know, this is not contingent if, if we win it, you know, if we don't, okay, that's great. If we do, that's great too. You know, how do we get more kids in New York city to understand uh, the value of equestrian sports. And, you know, um, we all know that the average bachelor's degree now is anywhere between 200 to $250,000 if you're not going to a SUNY. And even if you're going to a SUNY, if you're boarding there, it's about 35,000. Binghamton's 35,000. Do the math times four. Um, and if you're Excelsior and you're below $125,000 combined household income, tuition's only the thing that's covered and that's only $7,000. The rest is room and board and that's out of pocket expenses to the parents. So how do we utilize disposable income sports to get 
ch children excited also about academics and then how do we bridge that to our sport to get them college scholarships? Um, because the one with the least student loan debt wins, right? So if we can get them on the bachelor's degree and reduce that student loan debt, we've contributed to now cutting down with the national deficit. And then we're also talking about that as just the master's, we're, oh, excuse me, that's just the bachelor's. We're not even talking about the, the master's and so forth that goes with that. Um, and we're just, you know, as I mentioned, we're doing this as a component of how do we get children excited about academics using the dangling carrot, no pun intended, of horses. Uh -huh. That's not nice. <laughs> no, very good. I just, I, uh, I was hearing you talk about youth, I, every horse 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 and you're wanting to know about the our community. No, no, we we've we've been we've been lots of lots of hair dye going through this process. Yes. <laughs> I did an RFP for the city. I yes. get it. Yeah. I'm sure, I pick up the metaphor, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, are there any other questions for Mr. Costa? I don't want to be a nag. Oh, you did. You're not a nag. You well. Ask away. <laughs> He's making horse puns. It's oh, a nag. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That was a good one. I missed it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and as I said, if you've got materials, please send it over to the board office. We're happy to share and post on our Facebook and anything else just to I'm make happy sure to. folks are aware. We're we're a New York City DOE uh, vendor. Um, so you know, we're happy to, you know, help in any way, shape, or form we can. Okay. No any other new business? Any old business that people that occurred to folks as we were talking? Um, should we then adjourn? Is there any objection to adjourning? To adjourn. Second. Thank you so much for spending part of your evening with us. Uh, I really appreciate your thoughts and insights and look forward to seeing you again. Uh, Julia. Dr. Costa, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Take care. Julia. Yes, sir. Uh, when you go through, uh, I, I know you sent this out quickly. Take another look at it. Uh, you may want to make a couple edits, one of which uh, is that it's fiscal year 2026. There is no 2526. I'm sorry? The fiscal, it, uh, these budget requests are for fiscal year 2026, not 25 26. The fiscal year starts. Uh, July 1 of 25 and runs through um, June 30, but it's considered fiscal year 2026. 